Hello, welcome to episode 47 of Little Bobbin's Knits. My name is Danny, and this is Bobbin. And you can find me on Ravelry as Little Bobbins, on Instagram as Little Bobbins, and show notes for the podcast can be found at littlebobbins.co.uk. We also have a Ravelry group, and it'd be lovely if you came and joined us, and you can find that by searching Little Bobbins Knits in the Groups tab on Ravelry. Thank you so much for coming to join me today. Um, I put my computer in to be repaired the week before last, so I'm hoping that all of my slow computer issues will be fixed now. And I really wanted to get a podcast in this week, so I got up nice and early. It's Saturday, it's about half seven, and this is very early for Bobbin. Usually I have to go and get him out of bed after making myself a cup of tea in the morning, and David's still in bed. And I have never recorded with him in the house, so we'll see how this goes. I might get a call in a minute that I'm being too loud and have to relocate downstairs, but we'll see. Bobbin can see someone over there um, hanging out her washing, so I'm really, really surprised that he's not barking. You've been a very good boy. So I hope you've had a lovely week since I saw you last. If you're new to the podcast, welcome, I hope you really enjoy it. And if you've watched before, thank you so much for coming back. It means such a lot. So today I've got some works in progress to show you. Just grab my list over. Some finished objects, some lovely things. We'll talk a bit about the list along and I'll show you a few new things I've been making for my shop, which I'm very excited about. I've also got some very, very smelly treats here for Bobbin try and make it okay that he's had to come and podcast with me so early. Unfortunately, I didn't put them in a sensible container, so it's a bit crackly. There you go, Bob. He loves these ones. They absolutely stink. Right, so, work's in progress. In my lovely new bag, this is from Lara at, well, her shop is called The Fawn and the Fox, and she has The Fawn Knits podcast. It's a wonderful podcast, I'm sure I've mentioned it before. Um, and Lara makes bags, and she also dyes yarn now, which is really exciting. It looks absolutely beautiful. But she very, very kindly sent me this bag, which I think is so cute. It's a lovely feel fabric, and it's got gold metallic bits on there, which I obviously love. This is Bobbin trying to steal those stinky treats that I mentioned. Bobbin, sit down. I've popped a little brooch on there as well because I just couldn't resist. There's this craft co-op um, in a little town very close by and it's full of lots of different makers' work. We went over there. I've been over a couple of times to this shop. But this one time we went over, I think it was last weekend, I found these adorable little brooches. <clears throat> I didn't bring the other ones over, I should have. I popped a picture on Instagram though, if you'd like to see them. And I just couldn't resist getting them. There's this one, C-A-T. And I also got a rabbit and a fox, because they're so adorable. And I got in touch with the woman who makes the brooches because I recently discovered, although I knew all along, that I'm a Hufflepuff. <laughs> um, so I wanted to see if she could make me a one with a badger with a sort of yellow ruff around the back. Unfortunately, she can't. But in that exchange, I found out that she actually lives in the same village that I do, which was quite funny. But yeah, a very, very locally made brooch. So my socks that I'm keeping in this bag are David's bobbin socks, aren't they? This is my lovely yarn that was a custom dye from Felt Fusion. This is the Slipper Wearing Monkey colourway. And it's inspired by the little bobbin. Good boy. Now, 
haven't grown a lot because they're just for, I'm just using them for the odd moments when I need a bit of plain knitting time, but I love how they're knitting up. I was knitting these on my Carbons needles, 2.25, but I can't always knit with Carbons. I really do find that they slow you down. With some yarns they work really well, but with some the drag is just too much. So when I was at Unravel last weekend, which I'll tell you about in a little while, I picked up some Chiagu 2.25 DPNs. So I've been knitting on those and I really like them. They're not my high higher sharps, obviously, because they're a different needle. They're not quite as sharp. They do have a lovely, lovely taper on the tip though, which I like. And they're nice and smooth, like the high highers, and nice and light too. So I do really like them. Um, I only put them in sort of about half an inch back, so I haven't had a great deal of time with them, but so far I'm really enjoying them. Oh, that reminds me, Claire, who is useful hours on Ravelry, who I think I met at Unravel. Didn't I, Claire? I think you've got a different username on Instagram. Um, was asking about DPNs. She's new to using DPNs. And was asking what length do I find is the best and whether I use four or five. Well, the four or five question is different for everybody, I have recently discovered. Uh, I use four, so I have my stitches on three and I use the fourth needle to knit with. But some people find using four needles to hold your stitches and the fifth one to knit with much easier. And I can see that because then you've got the front and the back of the sock on in two halves effectively so yeah I think that's just practice finding out which you prefer as for length the DPNs that I use are all six inches and I really like that length I know you can get eight inch ones and I probably use those for a sleeve or a hat and not so available here I think more available in America are five inch DPNs and I'm intrigued about how they would work. I wonder if they would be a bit short and stab your palm. I'm not sure because I've never tried them, but yeah, all of the DPNs that I use are six inch ones. So, Bobbin just can't stop staring at those treats. Can you, Bobbin? Insatiable appetite for treats. <clears throat> In my lovely Mrs. Brown's bag, this is a bag, I've got my true friend. And I think this has grown since I last showed you. After saying, and this always happens to me, after saying about how I really want to get it finished. For the retreat, I've cast on something new. Now where on earth am I? Oh, okay. Again, you can't see it very well, but I'll just show you the stripe section because I think that's a bit longer. I think I've got, well, let's count, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stripes. I think it may have only grown two stripes. I have seven in my head for some reason. But yes, I'm still going on that. I'm starting to think that instead of finishing it for the retreat, I'm going to be taking it to the retreat. Because I've got a lot of stripes to go. I've got over, well I've done nine and I've got 21 I think, so. Quite a few and the rows are getting longer each time. So, only slightly longer actually I think, but longer nonetheless. The True Friend is by Vera Valamaki. And Vera was at Unravel on Sunday because she and Hohi Locatelli have a new book out that's been published by Pom Pom Press, which I'll show you in a minute because I picked up a copy. But Vera had bought a lot of her samples to Unravel and one of them was The True Friend. 
and seeing it in person really really inspired me to want to finish this because it just looked so lovely and thanks to their new book I have so many other things that I want to knit now so yeah I'm going to keep going on that. I think things like socks will take a bit of a back seat while I do some work on some garments because I'd really like some more garments. I haven't spoken to anyone but you today so my throat is a bit croaky. I'm drinking some pink lemonade tea. Uh, my auntie Jack dropped some in yesterday because she was saying about how delicious it was and it really is. It's not pink lemonade tea, it's rose lemonade. And you can really smell the rose. It smells like Turkish delight. It's delicious. So my ah I do have a you can't watch this bit mum at the end. But I do have one more work in progress in my little work in progress basket. At Unravel I also picked up the new issue of Pom Pom. I was subscribed but then my subscription ended and I haven't got round to resubscribing and I really must because every issue of Pom Pom has at least a few things that I really would like to knit and it's got so much interesting stuff to read as well apart from being just a lovely thing. But also at Unravel, I saw the sample for this jumper. And I just thought it was so lovely. The sample was knit in Toft Aran and it was very, very heavy. But I tried it on and I think it will be a really nice, cosy, lovely jumper. So I've cast that one on. It's called Rumbeel. I'm just trying to find who it's by. It's by, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Gina Rockenbergner. I'm afraid I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know if you can see. All the patterns that I talk about and everything will be linked in my show notes. But I really, really wanted to cast that on. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if you've been to a retreat before or a knitting festival. I know Rhinebeck has a big thing with the Rhinebeck sweater. But I'm just desperate to get a few things finished for this retreat so that I can wear them there. But uh, the retreat is in about two weeks. <laughs> it's wishful thinking that I'll get anything finished I think. But I thought I might have a good chance with this jumper because it's knit in such heavy weight yarn. I'm using this very, very precious stash. This is Juno Fiber Arts and it's the Eve, which is one of the Naturals collection. It's just a beautiful yarn. It's a single ply. And it's blue faced Leicester and it's an Aran weight or a light chunky. It's just gorgeous. Um, Mum and I got this. Oh gosh, how many years ago? Maybe about five years ago from Unravel. And yeah, it's very, very precious because Juno Fibre Arts are no longer around, which is sad because they were one of my favourite independent yarn dyers. I'm knitting this on six millimetre carbons. After knitting on needles no bigger than a four, I seem to be knitting on a six millimetre quite often. I had to steal them from my Penguono. And I've got this much done so far, if you can see that. I just love how this is knitting up. It's just so lovely. I think it is going to be really, really cosy. And because this yarn is a single, it's quite airy and soft and squishy, so I think it's going to be a bit lighter than the sample. I am a little concerned that it's going to stretch out quite a lot with time, but 
we'll see. So the jumper is knit from the bottom up and you knit the front and you add the stitches for the sleeves and then you make the back in pretty much the same way. So it's very very simple, down here went really quickly because you've only got a small amount of stitches on your needles. The rows are a bit longer now because I've got the arms involved but it's still quite a quick knit. I think if I stop getting distracted by other things I could easily have the back finished this weekend but who knows if that will happen because I do so frequently get distracted by other things. Robin, you're attached to the yarn. Oh. I don't think this would be a good pattern if you don't like purling because it's all in purl garter stitch. But I'm really, really enjoying it, so that's a lot of fun. And I really hope to have it finished in time, but we shall see. So on to finished objects. I have one finished object and they are David's socks. They are a little bit too big for my sock blockers and they are still a little bit damp. I did actually finish them for Valentine's Day. Well, I finished them on Valentine's Day. But David knew that I'd like to show them on the podcast before he wore them. So I've only just got round to sewing in the ends and blocking them. But he'll be able to have them today, which I'm sure he'll be pleased about. These are in the Knit Picks Felici in the Baker Street colourway and I've used hedgehog fibres in stone. It's hedgehog fibres sock in the stone colourway for the heel, which I just think went perfectly. So yeah, that's those finished. My sock blockers, I get quite a lot of questions about my sock blockers, on Instagram mostly, and I got these from loop in london they're i think called bryce bryson or bryce bun and i just think they're really really great sock blockers because they they're literally just a frame so they let the most amount of air sort of circulate i used to have some that were quite thick plastic and because so much more material plastic was touching the sock I think it did take the socks longer to dry and also I put them on the radiator and completely warped and melted them <laughs> which doesn't happen with these because they're metal so yeah I really like those um, sock blockers and would recommend them I wanted to mention a few podcasts that I've been really enjoying I've written them down that's all of my works in progress and finished objects I haven't got a massive amount of knitting time again. Oh, and there was some drama with that which we cannot talk about until Mum has turned off the podcast. <laughs> so the podcasts I've been really enjoying. There's Eric from Sticks Plus Twine, which I've just been loving. Um, he's quite new at podcasting. I was going to mention his podcast absolutely ages ago, so he was newer then. But yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying his podcast. He talks about really interesting perspectives, which I really enjoy, and I would like to have tea with him. So I really, really enjoy that podcast. Also, Jacqueline from Brooklyn Knit Folk, I really enjoy. It's just so interesting hearing different people's thoughts about knitting and why they make things and... Jacqueline had a lovely episode, a couple of episodes back, where she showed us a quilt that she had made. And the way she talked about this quilt and the sort of collectiveness of making this quilt was just so inspiring and so interesting. I really enjoyed it and it made me want to make a quilt. So yeah, I'd really recommend her podcast too. Also, Eva from The Charm of It, I'm really enjoying her podcast. She's really, really thoughtful about her making and I find that really, really interesting. She also has two completely adorable co-hosts. 
her dog and C.A.T. And I want Thistle and Bobbin to be friends because I think they would look so cute playing. Wouldn't they? Even though Bobbin hates all other dogs. So it wouldn't work. But in my imagination, Bobbin and Thistle are friends. Wouldn't they? So I really, really enjoy her podcast. She's very, um, very skilled at altering patterns for her, which I always find interesting. And there's also Shauna from Adelaide Cottage, which I'm really, really enjoying watching. Shauna's just l lovely and her podcasts are always really peaceful and relaxing and she is really inspiring too. So yes, they're the podcasts that I wanted to mention. I'll put links to all of them in the show notes but I've been really really enjoying watching them. There are others that I just haven't written down yet so I need to write those ones down and I'll tell you a few more next week. So we've got a thread in the group. I can't remember what it's called but it's about which podcast you enjoy. If you find new ones do come in there and let me know what they are. I try to keep the list updated but I haven't updated it for a while so I need to go through and put some links in there. But it's always so lovely to find a new podcast isn't it and see how how that person is chatting about their knitting and what they're working on. Because I always seem to, with every podcast I watch, I seem to want to cast on something new or try a new yarn. So yeah, I just really, really enjoy them. So on to lovely things. Robin, are you okay? He's just transfixed by those treats, aren't you? Oh my goodness. So stressful. So as I told you about last time, David got me a lovely sock bank from Maya at the Wall Barn and it got hidden away until Valentine's Day. It's just so beautiful. There's one of the hearts. It's on a pink background. I love Maya's new labels. I don't know how new they are actually. They're just so cute, aren't they, with that lovely illustration. So this is the Sweetheart Sock Bank. Superwash Merino and Nylon Blend. I'll take it out of the label. I'm thinking I might take this to knit at the retreat. Isn't it beautiful? So I'm so excited to see how this will knit up. I assume they'll just be sort of little lines of the darker pink on the lighter pink base. But it'll be lots and lots of fun. And I think it'll be fun to take along uh, to the retreat because it's quite a nice size to travel with. So I can knit it on the train and things like that. So sock blanks, if you haven't used one before, they are just a panel of machine knitted fabric and to knit with them you find the end that the yarn comes more freely from and just unravel and knit. When you get the yarn off it is really really squiggly, I don't know if it's going to focus on that, it's really squiggly and I do find that I'm a bit more mindful about keeping maybe a slight more, slightly more tension on my yarn so that I'm not knitting in any of these little ridges. But I just knit them pretty much the same as always. The fabric when you've finished knitting your sock or whatever you want to use it for is a bit bumpy but when you block it they look just like socks that you've knit from flat yarn. So. I really enjoy sock banks. I wasn't sure if I would because I like my knitting to be neat throughout the process, but I really, really enjoy them. And it's so interesting seeing how these patterned bits translate into a different gauge and in the round. So yeah, 
really looking forward to that. And Maya very, very sweetly included something else in my package. Which is so beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, or should I take this to the retreat? I don't know. This is a Stardust sock and it's in the vintage tea party colourway. It's so beautiful. It's sort of buff and cornflower blue and a lovely pink colour and there's sort of a really really light minty green. I hope the colours are showing up because it's absolutely beautiful and there's sparkle in there. So that was an absolutely lovely treat and a lovely surprise. Thank you so much Maya. So beautiful. My mum treated me to something lovely. I had been recommended some stitch markers by my friend Kim. Kim is Squimbalina on Ravelry and Instagram. And she was talking about these lovely stitch markers that she uses. And I saw some of them at the Crimbo party that we went to. Bobbin, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come here. Now, I hope these will be able to focus because they're just so beautiful. So, they're completely, what's the word? Snag free. I wonder if you can see there as well. They're made of rutilated quartz. The maker solders the rings so that they're completely snag free and they've got rutilated quartz crystals on them. I'm actually using one on my true friend. They were five. And she also got me these ones, which are smaller than the last ones. Good for socks and shawls and things. These are amethyst. I really love crystals, so I was so excited about these. And these ones are moonstone. They're little squashed moonstone cylinders. And they're absolutely beautiful. They really are like jewellery. Jewellery for your knitting, because they're so beautiful and so beautifully made. They're from Spin Pretty on Etsy. Oh, and did I say where you can find the wool barn? I probably didn't because I just... I think I've mentioned Maya quite a few times. So I just assume that you know. But um, the wool barn has actually moved to their own website, which is very exciting and it looks just lovely. And you can find it at thewoolbarn.com. So. so thank you for those, Mum. So yeah, they're lovely stitch markers. I would really highly recommend those. And she's got all sorts of different crystals in there. There's some garnet ones as well, which are really lovely. I think that's Mum's birthstone, so I was quite tempted by those too. So now let's go into what I got at Unravel. Unravel was lovely. I went with my mum and my aunt, Auntie Jack, and we just had such a lovely day. We always leave really early so that we can get there when the doors open. And it's just such a fun, oh, that's my mum, sorry about that. It's just such a fun day out. Let me pop that on silent. Unravel is my favourite festival of the whole year, I think. If Unwind happened more frequently, I think that would be a close contender. And I do really, really like Vibraced as well. 
but I've just got such fondness for Unravel. I remember Mum and I went to the very, very first one when it was held in a different place. Um, I don't know how long ago that must have been. But yeah, I really, really love Unravel. It's in a Maltings, so you sort of have to adventure through lots of different rooms and different floors. It's just really fun. There's always really interesting uh, yarn people there, producers. and It's a lovely, lovely festival. And it's quite interesting. I don't know... It, it felt different this year. And I don't know whether it was because it was different or because I was different. But festivals in general for me have changed a bit. They did used to be about going to get new yarn. Lots and lots if possible. But now they're, I think I'm a bit more, perhaps because I've got a bit more yarn, I'm a bit more thoughtful about what I actually buy. And also, it's very much about meeting with people, meeting up with people that I chat to a lot during the week. So that's such a lovely element to have been brought into it because, yeah, there are quite a few people who I chat to quite a lot online and it's lovely to meet them in person. It's because you feel like you know them already. So. Yeah, that's a really, really lovely element that's sort of very recently come into my festival going experience. So I got to meet up with some people at Unravel, which was just so, so wonderful. I got to meet some people who watch the podcast, which is so lovely. If you came to say hello, thank you so much. It It's just so lovely for me to know that you're watching and enjoying the podcast, so thank you. It was a lovely day. I think usually when I go to festivals I come home with a lot of sock yarn and I didn't come home with any this time. Everything I brought home has a plan so yeah there are changes and I can't guarantee that that will happen next time when I go to Fibreys. I might just come home with lots of random sparkly sock yarns that I just fall in love with and that's great too but this time I came home with things with a plan whether they'll actually make make it to being that plan I don't know but at the moment they have a plan so yeah I'll just show you a few of the things that I got Bobbin I need my arm excuse me my baby shame you can't see him because he's I don't know if he's low or if I'm low but anyway so I got the last issue of Pom Pom and I also got the issue before that I'd missed the Pom Pom stand is always so lovely to go and have a look at they've always got a few samples quite a few samples from the recent My mind's gone blank. Recent, I want to say episodes, but that's wrong. Issues. The recent issues. Which is really, really good to see because I don't know, had I seen that Rombill pattern just on Ravelry, whether I would have wanted to knit it. I think it was seeing the sample that made me want to knit it. And there are quite a few others in this that I really want to knit. I'm I've just gone completely back onto a pom-pom thing now, but I like how they have themes for each issue. This one was natural, and I love this jumper, the textures in that. Interestingly enough, maybe, interesting to me, the jumper that I have cast on is kind of inspired by tumbling block quilt patterns. And this one reminds me of half square triangles in quilting. And they're the two that I'm most drawn to. I found that interesting. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so I also got this pom pom. And I haven't had a proper look through it yet, but I saw some of the samples there. And 
there were quite a few things that I'd really like to knit like that jumper is so lovely beautiful and there's a lovely hat the suffragette hat which I really really like as well I'd like to knit that one I wonder what that's knit in I'll go and have a look when I finish this but yeah I'd really like to knit that one I think that would be a nice one to wear I also had to pick up a copy of Interpretations 3 this is the one I was telling you about earlier by Hohi Locatelli and Vera Valamaki and this is so beautiful they had the Interpretations 1 and 2 there as well that they've printed and they were beautiful too so I think I'm going to have to add them to my collection but this, it's just full of beautiful patterns. I don't think there's one that I don't want to knit. <laughs> I love this one. I think it's called Light Rain. And it's just a beautiful light, it's in fingering weight. So it's just beautiful light sort of layer. I can't wear roll necks, but I think I could wear that because it's sort of loose, more like a cow neck. Nice and loose and just looks so comfortable and cosy. This hat is also very lovely. I probably won't show you all the patterns, but I just, I just love this book. I really like this hat. And I imagine that texture would be really fun to pop in socks as well. And I really like this jumper. That's also in a fingering weight. Let's use that one actually. But yeah. So there were some samples from Vera's patterns. Like there was this one there, which I'm obviously going to have to knit, but I'm not allowed to knit it until after I finish my true friend because they do have similarities. And I love this. I think that would be such a wearable cardigan it's lovely and drapey and just beautiful reversible cables it's called my everything so yeah i had to add one of these to my library there's just beautiful patterns in there and because it's from pom pom press it's the same size as the pom pom books so i'm gonna have a lovely shelf for them a special shelf it's the same as the Take Heart book that I told you about a couple of episodes ago, which is also a beautiful book. So that is all of the not yarn that I got. I also got the chow goose. Onto the yarn. So I was watching Katie from Inside Number 23, which is another podcast that I've been really enjoying, I meant to mention. Um, yeah, her podcast is just lovely. I'm sure you've heard about it because it's been mentioned on lots of other different podcasts. But yeah, Katie's really upbeat and just lovely to spend a bit of time with. And she has made me desperately want to cast on a Weasley jumper. I desperately want to cast on a Weasley jumper. I will, one day. One day soon, I hope. But yeah, I was watching Katie on her podcast, Inside Number 23, and she went to Unravel too, and we were there on the same day, but I didn't see her. This place is just a... It's a bit of a rabbit warren so you can just go the whole day without running into someone I think. I was going there to meet up with my friend Deb and my friend Amanda and I don't think Deb and I would have met unless we'd actually called each other so yeah it's quite a quite a little maze. But I was watching Katie chat about her experience at Unravel and it was so interesting because we were drawn to completely different stands, completely different yarn. I just thought that was so fun. So if you haven't watched her episode and would like to hear a bit more about Unravel, 
do go and have a look because you will see a completely different perspective. And yeah, that's the wonderful thing about podcasts, isn't it? You get completely different perspectives of the same things. So I seemed to be drawn to all of the British yarn. Um, not intentionally, but all of the yarn that I came home with was British yarn. So one of my favourite stands there was Little Grey Sheep, the Little Grey Sheep. They're actually, their farm is quite near Farnham, which is less than an hour away from here. That's where all of the sheep live. And then I think they get the, I think they get the yarn spun somewhere else. Maybe Devon, I seem to think. And then they dye it back on the farm. So it's a very local yarn, really. They are having some shearing days coming up, so I hope to go along to one of them because I think it would be so much fun. I got full skeins of this. This is a double knit and it's British Hampshire yarn. A woolen blend of our Gotland and Stein fine wool along with some of our neighbouring farm's finest fibres. And this colourway is My Heart Is Not My Own. I just thought it was so lovely. I bought this with the intention of being the jumper that I'm knitting out of Juno Fibre Arts. But then I had a bit of a panic and thought, oh, it's going to be too light. So I'm going to knit that one, see how it goes. And then if it will work, I will knit it out of this as well. Or find a completely different pattern to knit this out of. At the moment, I'm in that stage where I want to knit five of those jumpers. We'll see if I still feel like that when it's when one is finished. <laughs> But yes, this is just so beautiful. I don't think any of their yarn is, oh, I don't know. This isn't the softest, so if you're a bit uh, delicate, then it's not the softest yarn. But it's so lovely and woolly, and the sheep who made this yarn live less than an hour away, which I just think is really special. So that will be lovely to use. And I also got, uh, what shall I show you first? I'll show you this one. I got full skeins of this, Titus. This is the Bramley Baths colourway. This is another British yarn. This is 70% British wool, which is a makeup of 50% Wensleydale long wool, 20% blue face Leicester. And it also has 30% of UK alpaca. I bought a skein of this before from Unravel, I think, to knit a hat. And it's such beautiful yarn. Baramu. I think their shop is in Yorkshire. I'm not certain. But they have a really lovely stand. They have two different types of yarn. And they have all of the colours all of the hanks sort of hung up at the side of the stand and then all the skeins are in like baskets underneath. So you can just see this wall of really beautiful colours. And they also had some samples of, I think there was a shawl and a jumper and a cardigan. They were the ones that I noticed anyway. And the jumper that they had as a sample was just lovely and I've forgotten to write down which one it is so I'll pop it in the show notes. It's a Carol Feller jumper and it's sort of a mesh lace on the front and the back is plain but it's got some nice shaping and plain arms and it just looked so lovely and wearable that I couldn't resist. So I'm really looking forward to knitting that jumper out of this. This was the colour that the sample was in as well. So yeah, I think I was completely swayed by how beautiful that garment was. And I hope I can recreate something as beautiful. So yeah, that was lovely. And then, this is not actually my purchase, but I do get to knit with it. 
Mum would like me to knit her a three colour cashmere shawl by Hovey Locatelli. And the grocery girls are actually doing a knit along of that pattern, which is very exciting and I'm definitely going to join in with that. So while we were at Unravel, Mum had a look at colours that she would like me to put together for the shawl. I need my arm, baby. Oh, he's so tired. And we found these ones. I just think these are going to be so beautiful for that shawl. There's something really sorbet about them, I think. They're just lovely. So these are also from the Little Grey Sheep. And this is the British Stein Fine Wool, and it's a four ply. Their yarns are really bouncy and lovely. I just can't wait to knit with this. It's a two ply. And this is quite soft. I think if you're, although I'm really not a very good judge, I think if you are slightly more on the sensitive side, then this would be fine for you because it is, it's much softer than that other one. So this is spring greens, this colour. This one is my secret valentine, which is just beautiful. I love the tonal variation in these yarns as well. You can see in this one too, there's some bits which are just a really light, sort of creamy green. And then there's the really, really bright spots of green. And this one is polar. Which is just a cream. So I'm really looking forward to casting those on. I think that 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 will just make such a beautiful shawl. So I'm really, really excited about that. Mum has actually started knitting. She was very inspired by the Midwinter Yarns stand. They had these lovely samples of, I think it's called the Linus shawl, knit up in two of their different gradient yarns. And so she got <clears throat> a kit to make those, which was really, really exciting because I would love Mum to knit more. I just, I just love knitting and I think knitting is good for everyone. So, and Mum used to knit quite a bit, but she doesn't so much anymore. So, oh, look at your ear tassels. So it was really exciting that Mum got some yarn and has started a project. She started her shawl now, which is exciting, isn't it, Bobbin? But I don't think she wants to do anything with any, um, with too much pattern in. So I still get to knit with the lovely little grey sheep yarn and knit her three colour cashmere shawl, which I'm really, really pleased about because I really want to knit that. And that yarn is just going to be beautiful to knit with. So yes, that is my lovely things. I also, this is also my lovely thing, but I showed you that earlier. My lovely bag from The Fawn and the Fox. So onto the little along that I'm hosting with lovely Zena of the Little Yellow Crafts podcast. So we've got some new prizes, which is really, really exciting. And there are so many projects in the finished objects thread. It's just so exciting and so inspiring. So I'm not certain if this is going to be a prize for the little along yet, because I haven't put the prize packages together yet. But Lara, when she sent me my bag, sent a bag for you. It's just so beautiful. I think I would call this seafoam green. What do you think? It's just gorgeous. And look at her lovely label. It's so very sweet. It's beautifully made little bag. Perfect for a sock project. Thank you so much, Lara. And we'll have these as prizes for the little along. Barbara from the Knitting I Love podcast, which is lovely. Barbara has just a, a really lovely energy and absolutely loves knitting hats. She sent us along one of her little, well, it's called the Flower Power Collection, big set. And in there, because you probably can't see, is the plastic. She also sent me a set. So there's one of these, which you can put your circular needles, you put them through here 
and in this little hole to keep them all safe and then there's one of these which is a little DPN holder they're made out of a sort of felt with little laser images in them which are really lovely and then there's two of these little labels which you can sew onto your work they say handmade and it's this really squishy little felt there's a sort of brown one and a grey one which it doesn't want to focus on and there's one of these which is a needle gauge I don't know if you can read the letters but how cute is that perfect little thing to pop in your notions bag so yes we'll have the green set as a prize in a little long so thank you so much for that Barbara it's really lovely yes yeah, so I'll get all of the prize packages together because it is the end of February on Monday isn't it so I'll close the thread on the 1st of March and in the next episode I will draw for the prizes which is really exciting I'm hoping it'll be much easier to podcast now because of having my computer fixed I'm keeping my fingers crossed anyway I it turns out I've been neglecting my computer so it should have had some updates and things probably for about four years so it's running really really slowly it would take me all day just to get the episode into iMovie. Can you see his little paw? Oh my goodness, you're so cute. But hopefully that will be finished now. And will take much, much less time. You're so good and lovely. So, on to things I've been making for my shop. Thank you so much for your positive response to the things, to me showing you things that I've been making for my shop in the last episode. That was really lovely. I appreciated that so very much. I've been so tired from being woken up so early, aren't you? So I've been making some really, really lovely bags. There's these ones with the sheep. Oh, and it's got that lovely cotton. It's um, sort of a heavier weight cotton on the bottom. I just think this looks really sophisticated. And I love these little sheep. There's one there. You see it that just can't see through its hair. <laughs> I think they're so cute. Oh, there's one at the top there. Yeah, so I've got some of the sheep bags. And I don't know what it is. I really like a theme. And I noticed in the last update there was a bit of a, a CAT theme and in this one there seems to be a bit of a bumblebee theme because I made these lovely bags with this gorgeous fabric this has got the cotton on the bottom as well I love that stuff gives it a nice sturdy bottom but I think it just it's really lovely looking as well and I made some needle cosies with that bee fabric too. These have got that nice yellow, buttery yellow lining. And I love these, some of the bees have got pink wings. I think only one on here has pink wings and some of them have got blue, which I thought was lovely. And then I was making some of my applique bags. It's got a little bee and a flower, and on the back there's a little flower. And I couldn't resist making some notions pouches. And I have to say, I just think these are so cute. <laughs> so they've got the same applique, but just sized down. They're adorable. They've got the little flower on the back too. And... It's a nice size for popping all of your notions in. I just 
think they're so cute. And I've also got, I've only actually got a couple of these, but they're little bee brooches. I hope you can see that through the plastic. So that's so cute. So yeah, I seem to develop a theme without even realising. <laughs> I have these two bags as well. This lovely bear fabric, which I just think is so cute. A bit of thread there. I put this sort of polka dot cotton canvas bottom on there. I just love these, the bear sleeping on the big bear and then little baby bear doing some playing. Just thought that was such cute fabric. And this one, I couldn't resist this fabric when I saw it in the fabric shop. I just think it's absolutely adorable. I love illustrations like this. I just thought it was so cute. I put a sort of, um, sort of a rusty orange linen bottom on these. But they're so sweet. There's a little sausage dog there. And a little CAT there. She's got a little bird on her head. I just love these. Really, really cute illustrations. I have a bit more of that fabric, so I think I might make some larger bags, or maybe some of this size. If you'd be interested in seeing some larger sort of um, jumper size bags, do let me know, and I'll think about making some of those, think about what dimensions I'll use and things. But yeah, I really enjoyed making all of those. I, yeah, I'm thrilled with those, so I hope you like them. I'm going to pop them in the shop at 7pm on Monday, which is the 29th. 7pm uh, GMT. I popped a little note in the top of my shop to let you know that they'll be going in there. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. And thank you so much to the people who came and supported my update last time. It was just, it was just lovely. Thank you. I won't have anything else in the shop for a few weeks now because I'm going to be making some things to take to the Curious Handmade Country House Retreat. There's going to be a little mini marketplace there. I'm going to be taking some of my applique bags I think I'm going to make some more of the little notions bags as well. I'm going to play with a few more of my applique designs. So I'll still show you what I've made because there'll be things that I'll make again for the shop. Or if they don't, if I don't sell them at the retreat, then I'll bring them home and pop them in the shop as soon as I get back. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying sewing all of those. And that's why I haven't been getting as much knitting time I suppose because I've been sewing such a lot so yeah it's really lovely I'm thinking about some different ideas which is always fun we're gonna pop to the fabric shop a bit later aren't we Bobbin there's this lovely fabric shop in Wallingford and they let me take in Bobbin and they have a lovely selection of fabrics so we're going to pop along there because I've run out of linen so this fabric that I use for my applique bags is a sort of is a linen cotton blend which is really lovely and so I need to go and get some more of that now I just started uploading the episode into iMovie which has completely changed now my computer's been fixed and updated and I have no idea how to use it and then I realised that I'd forgotten to mention mum's socks so in my lovely Mrs Brown's bags bag I've got mum's socks and I had a complete palaver with these I had finished no I got about just ready to do the heel on one sock and I was about halfway through the leg on the other and I suddenly thought, hmm, one of these needles feels, or 
this needle feels larger than it should. So I had a look and I was knitting the socks on 2.25 and two of the needles were 2.5 millimetre. Oh, there's a lovely red kite outside. I wish I could show you. It's just swooped down into someone's garden. Oh, that was amazing. Sorry, I got completely distracted by that. There has been lots of red kite activity right outside the house. There's a big tree just outside the window of my studio. And a couple of times this week, one of them has come and landed at the top of the tree. And it's just, they're magnificent. I always just absolutely love seeing them. Anyway, sorry about that. So yes, two out of four of my DPNs were the wrong size. So I sulked with them for a little while and really I think it wouldn't have made a huge amount of difference, but I just couldn't. I couldn't let it be. So I ripped them out. Earlier in the week I was considering ripping them out because I'd found this pattern, it's called Geek Socks and it's a free pattern on Nitty. I can't remember who the designer is but I'll pop that in the show notes. And I really fancied knitting these socks and I was thinking of ripping out the socks I was doing but I thought oh, I'm nearly halfway there and they're for a deadline which I don't know if I'm going to meet now. So I didn't, I did the sensible thing and carried on. But then when I found that my needles were the wrong size and I had to rip them out anyway, I thought I would cast them back on with the Geek Socks pattern. <laughs> oh, so this is all I have and these have got to be ready for next Sunday, hopefully. We'll see. So this pattern has a few different sizes. I'm still using the 64 stitches that I usually would but I cast on the rib in 2.25 millimetre and then for the body of the sock as these sort of waves are created with slip stitches I moved up to 2.5 millimetres for the rest of the sock and I really love how they're turning out I know there were lots of chevron socks out a while ago and I've never been very drawn to chevrons in knitting. I think maybe, I don't know. I don't know, because I do quite like angles. But I like this as a chevron alternative because it's so much softer. It's just like waves instead of points. So I really loved these socks. And I really couldn't wait to cast them on when I saw the pattern. Oh, you having a yawn. Oh. So I'm gonna work on these, <clears throat> excuse me some more today oh. <clears throat> excuse me and try and get as much done as I can it is fun and it is engaging because you do the slip stitch pattern when you get to the next colour change in the yarn so it does keep you interested in what's happening and you have to keep a bit of an eye on it and it's really really simple and has a great effect I think so I think it was meant to be that I was meant to do this pattern with this yarn. <laughs> That's what I'm going to think anyway. So yeah, I really like those, but that's all I've got. So the other ball for the other sock is just back into a ball. I'm using high, high sharps for that, which I absolutely love, especially because you slip three stitches at one point and so getting into those stitches and moving them across quickly is made really really easy because of the sharpness of the sharps. Right, so that really is all now. <laughs> so I'll try and get this bit onto iMovie too. <clears throat> it's completely different than um, it was before so goodness knows if that will work. So I hope you have a lovely time until I see you next. Oh, should we say goodbye, Bobbin? And I hope you come back and watch the next episode. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll see you soon. Bye. You say bye with your little paw. <laughs>